Hey Pete, state the nature of your emergency. What do we gotta do? P emergency. We gotta land right now, says Pete. Yep. So we found Corning Airport here. It's too windy up north today. It's dusting like crazy. We're gonna take a look at this windsock here. Pete's gotta pay. Yes. Okay, look at that windsock, Pete. Tell me what it's doing. Uh, let's see here. And then get on the radio and say, Yellow Husky overhead landing 3-5 Corning. Yellow Husky overhead landing Corning. Tell him, <laughs> I got to pee! <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at that windsock. Uh, uh, windsock, where are you? That segmented circle uh, right off our left wing tip there. Uh, looks like it's blowing behind us, the wind. Like over there. Yeah, so it's favorite landing to the north, right? Like the yeah. north winds. And you can feel it now as we get scattered around here. Yellow Husky downwind Corning 3-5. Look how fast the wind's blowing us away. Here. Yep. So we gotta turn right now. Tram, tram, tram. Trim, trim, trim. Thanks, Pete. We'll get her rounded up into the wind here. Bad news bears. Yeah, look at that crosswind from this angle. Yep. That was pretty smooth. Yeah. We stopped in like three feet. <laughs> yeah, and this kind of wind, it sure does, doesn't it? down to Gravelly Valley, that lake right up there, 12 o'clock, coming past Snow Mountain, here on the right. Mendocino National Forest, mostly all burnt up. Well, let's go over and see how the runway looks. Make sure it's clear of uh, elk. They got those big rows of elk, elk out here, ranging in these meadows. Try and get the reading of the wind off of the water there. It looks like, yep, it's definitely winds out of the north, so we want to land that way. We'll go and take some left circles around. Might be a little breezy down here today. A little bit in the shadows, we're a half hour from sunset. 4,000 feet of runway at the 2,000 foot elevation. Okay, I see we're coming across. Yeah, I got it now. So it looks like right base entry will be the best deal. Oh, there's a lot of folks over here. Oh, man, that looks like a lot of folks over there. But I want to camp over here, and my campsite looks clear of people. Okay, there's 3,000 feet, 2,900. Oh, we got a windsock, too. Great. Hey, there's some, there's an airplane down there, Pete. Gravelly Valley for Quebec Romeo's overhead for the north runway. Gravelly 
There's already an airplane camper over there. I like this little slab right here. Well off to the left of the field. Nice and private spot. What's that windsock look like to you? Does it look like much wind down there? Yeah. That little circle, see the circle with the orange? No, I can't see anything. Uh, gosh, it kind of looks like a nice crosswind. <laughs> you know, we could land going that way. Right into the wind, that would be kind of cool. Into the wind, into the windsock. Into the sun, let's try that. Looks a little gnarly. Let's try this, we'll slow fly on the crosswind airstrip and we'll go around if we need to doing a left turning pattern right in the same direction we just did just now. Crop mixture set, rising terrain. Yeah, wind's blowing good out of the west. Do the wind suck. I don't want to land just before the wind suck. On the dirt road. I slow fly it on in here. Clear of obstacle. Here. A blam. Oh yeah. That's what you can do with a husky. <laughs> you got a crosswind? You make a crosswind runway. Ah, uh, you gotta love that, Pippi. Right into the blinding sun. This is why they call her Gravelly Valley. <laughs> it's gravelly, all right. Oh, man, it's a good thing it ain't muddy. Now, let's go find that campsite I'm thinking of way over here. Not hit this, uh, nine. Don't those big donut tires take the kablamo out of the landing, though, you think? Okay, let's see what we got here. Yeah, slab right there. You see that little fire ring? Nice little grass patch here to park in. Oh, so we don't pop a nail into here. Oh, look at that dust storm we made. That should be fine. Exactly the spot I was thinking of, right there. Welcome to the Gravelly Valley Airstrip, airplane camping in the Husky, airplane camping in... An airplane like the Husky is a lot like motorcycle camping or moto adventure camping. You want to travel light. You got about, what does it say back there, Pete? 50 pounds? 50 pound maximum baggage cap capacity. And you don't have a lot of room in the back of the Husky when you're riding two up for a lot of gear. So we'll just show you the, the quick setup here. This is the slab at the Gravelly Valley Airstrip. The Airstrip is runs kind of north and south that direction 4,000 feet long and we're at about the 2,000 foot elevation now the wind was so strong last night that we went ahead and landed on this crosswind dirt road so we could land into the wind and there's a wind sock a wind wonder do right there pete show them your little hobo camp here so just get yourself a two-person tent. I like the REI, REI Passage 2, some uh, lightweight air mattresses. It's the same ones I use for motorcycle camping, the Big Agnes and a Thermarest, a couple sleeping bags, 
and a couple accessories I like to bring is the jet boil stove so you can get your morning coffee going and some oatmeal and the small solo stove I forget what model they call this is it the Ranger or something smaller and then you can just grab little twigs and sticks and have a nice little safe campfire and it just cleans up in a jiffy This is the Helinox ultralight ground chair that I used on the Transamerica Trail that makes camp much more comfortable. Uh, Lucy Lights, uh, pro tip, you gotta charge those things. They are solar powered, so you gotta leave them out in the sun, just don't leave them in the bag all the time. And then we just grab a snack on the way out the evening before and flying out of here, we're gonna be less than 30 minutes from breakfast. I think we'll uh, fly out and head up to Red Bluff. Pete, you want to go to Red Bluff for breakfast? Yeah. And we'll see if we can find Earl Allen and to get an update on his Stinson Detroit or he's got the interior all done on that thing. Mm. He didn't want his bird to be all lonely over there tonight, so he's going to come join us. You can hear the shooting range going on Saturday night in Gravely Valley. It's hopping. And what's your first name again? Christian. Say again? Kirsten, Kristen or Kirsten? Christian. Yeah, Christian. Yeah. And uh, you just got this out of Montana, and it's the 0290 hopped up Cessna 140 rag wing VGs and 850s. Yep, she's a good girl. She's done me good so far. And did you ferry her home from Montana? Yeah, it took about, uh, I think we did actually 12 hours back because we had uh -huh. a headwind the whole way. So uh huh. It took a little while. And you got a, a climb. Climb prop on there? Prop on it. Oh, okay. Um, but it still climbs. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. When I'm alone, I can get 2,000 feet a minute out of it. Uh huh. But uh, otherwise, you're looking. 2,000? Holy smokes. Yeah. Otherwise, though, if I'm loaded up, I can only get about 1,000. Yeah. Weight's a big difference, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a one and a half seat airplane, so. Yeah. But fits everything I need for camping in the back, so. See, that's an affordable bush yeah. plane right there. One of the biggest hazards, and it's kind of sad, to these backcountry airstrips, Forest Service airstrips, are idiots on quads and razors ripping around and just senselessly tearing up the airstrip. And the problem is these folks are so dumb, they don't even understand that this is a runway in the first place. Just ripping and tearing and spinning around and... senselessly tearing up the runway which would otherwise be a perfectly smooth graded gravel runway the other hazard to look for is those Rose roosevelt elk roosevelt elk on the runway at least they don't tear up the runway You just don't want to hit them. Like Pillsbury Tule elk. Tule elk is the smallest of the North American elk, and they're unique to California. Through the mid-1800s, thousands of these animals roamed the central valley and coastal foothills. However, unregulated hunting, agriculture development, and livestock grazing drastically reduced their numbers. Today, with continued conversation efforts, conservation. Yeah, tule elk numbers are improving. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, tule elk were introduced to the Lake Pillsbury Basin and can often be viewed in Gravely Valley er area as well as the Pils Lake Pillsbury Plain when lake levels are low. There's the lake right down there.
All right, Pepe, our uh, pre-flight checks are done before takeoff checks are done. Oil temperature is warming up. Safety checks, doors, windows, seat belts. Engine failure, Pete, we're going straight ahead. We got lots of overround and then the lake. So you know how to get out of that seat belt quickly, yes. right? And you know how to yeah. open this door, right? Yep. Clip it up, back. all right? Yep. And I'm gonna do a counterclockwise turn around the lake. We'll stick to the shoreline in case there's any trouble. But that won't. Then we'll climb out to the north for Red Bluff for breakfast. Yes, please. Copy that. Here we go. Roll it on slow. Here we got tons of runway. Time check there, Pete. Uh, 931. Very good. Thank you. Come right back on the power. Be quiet, neighbor, here for the campers. Yeah. Nice quiet, the quiet two departure out of Gravelly Valley. Beautiful, look at that, Pepe. All this good emergency landing area here. There goes our Stratus. Oops. Recovered. Fishermen are out here. There's the boat ramp. There's the fisherman. Wave to the fisherman, Pete. Stop. Hey, bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, that looks pretty shallow. It does. Temperatures and pressures looking good. So, Snow Mountain's over here on our left. We're going to peel out to the north of Snow Mountain. We could go out this way, the way we came in. Uh. So, here in the Mendocino National Forest, one of the largest wildfires in California history just last year, the August Complex burned, I'll have to go back and look at the numbers, but I think close to a million acres. Last year we burned four million acres here in California, and this whole mountainside was part of that burned complex, and this is just a small part of all that burned here in the Mendocino National Forest. Turn it around here so you can see a little better. Fortunately, Gravelly Valley airstrip was saved. It's still nice and green down there. All oh, this is about as far as you can see. There's Mount Lassen in the distance, Pete. We're already above the terrain. Almost. What do you want for breakfast, Pete? Pancakes. Pancakes. Bacon. Bacon. Let's get it. Pancakes and bacon, right, Pete? Yeah. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Let's go. Right over there. Uh, okay, so, Pete, what's the elevation at Red Bluff Airport? 354 feet. 354 feet above sea level. So we want to fly a thousand foot pattern. What's the pattern altitude? What's. what's... 1,354. Uh, Good. 1,000 plus 354. Good. And does it say something about RP15? What does it say? Yeah, it says, well, yeah, it just says 1PR5. Okay, so that means a right-hand pattern for runway 15 uh, if you're landing to the south because the town is right over there to the east of the airport and they don't want you flying over town. Say again, Pete. We gotta do roller coaster. Roller coaster? Yes, please. Okay, hang on. All right, we're gonna go up first, ready? Yeah, ah. Feel the G's? Yes, very much so. Okay, now we're gonna push over. Oh, this is so weird. Feel oh, the light? Feels like everything's floating. Yeah, that's negative G's. Here comes positive G's. Ah, ah. Uh, That's hard, huh? Yeah. And it's floating over the top. You don't like to do too many negative G's. The uh, engine will quit eventually if you do too many negative G's. Ready for positive G? Yep. 
Uh. Now, when you do those positive G's, tense up your tense up your um, stomach muscle, muscles. All right. Okay. I want you to tense up a little bit, and you'll tolerate the positive G's a lot better. Ready? Here we go. Hold your breath. Tense up your gut muscle. Uh, and go. Penguin traffic test eight yeah. Zulu over the 4H camp. Uh, breathe. For a left down. This is how you learn how to do aerobatics. Ready for another one? And tense up. Positive G. Good. <laughs> when we're doing positive G's, yeah. it gets harder to lift the iPad up. Oh yeah. Yeah, you should probably set all that stuff down. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like that. You'll be ready for some pancakes now, eh? Yeah. You like that? Uh-huh. Okay. Get our speed reestablished here. Basic acro training. Well, after our emergency divert into Corning, uh, we found that it was too windy up at Red Bluff. It was too windy for Earl to fly, and it was getting too windy for us, too. So we diverted back down here to Orville for what, Pete? What'd you get? Yeah. Hay fever? <laughs> no, a hamburger and breakfast burrito. landing right now. Yep, he should be on final. Traffic. We're eight miles to the southwest, right over Wolf Mountain, inbound. I'm going to stop 45, entry, left traffic, runway 25. Now those okay. guys are going <laughs> to, you could have you just fallen in by. Yeah, 5 triple one golf, 8 work back heading inside. I'm going to swing in behind you there, number two, on the 45. So you're going in for the landing. I'm number two, two yeah, run number one now. Departure, two five for departure. Those two guys will get it sorted out. That's a big help on the ADSB there, Pete, getting all this uncontrolled traffic. Under control. All right, winds are down the runway. Two flap kablamo. We're going to go to the fuel pump. So. All right, are we coming in right now? Yep. All right. Yeah, I see that one guy down there. On the runway. Yeah, he's moving out of the way. Yep. Nobody else in the pattern ahead of us, right? Uh, nope. Very good. Huh. There's a cool looking plane down there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, slow to flap speed. Looks like a warbird. Oh. Well, I wonder if that was that T6 that came in. It kind of looks like a T6. Is it? Yeah, well, after we left last week. It, it's, it's, like, like, it's got red yeah. on its nose. Two five, Let's go check it out. Alright. For Quebec Romeo, left base 25, Nevada County. Full stop. Coming in for a smooth one. Skyline 511 Golf, we're on a 3 mile 45 entry, left right. traffic, runway 25, crash line. Are we going to land on the grass or? No, no, we're going to land on the runway. Don't give away the secret speed, the manager will get after us. Land on the grass or? Yeah, be a plan on a long kablamo on 25 for the gas pumps. Valley, Nevada County, 8 4 Quebec, turn down on the 4 right 45, 6 miles for the left downwind, 2 5, number 2 beyond the skyline. There's a Trim, trim, trim. Trim. Bam alert. Oh, kablam alert. We're going to parachute on in here from the high. We're going to High key. We got good headwind here today. Sanker. Body. Oh, get ready. Blammo. No blammo. There's Just a stall. Look at that, baby. Who, Bro, so smooth. Who is your short field smooth operator? A... Watch that speed on final, oh, Pete, on those windy conditions. You felt that sink rate. Your little sphincter altimeter said, what did you say? What the? Yeah. <laughs> Got the idea, Pete. Or Quebec Romeo, clear the 2 5, Nevada County. Yeah. There's. That's all, Nevada County kind of traffic, County 5, 1 1. Indicated golf, airspeed, airspeed. Air 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 then there's your sphincter altimeter and your.
sink rate telling you something ain't right. So, lower the nose, come in with a little power. I'm opening up the window speed, it's getting warm. Summer is hurt nigh upon us. Hurt near Pete. 